Okay, so welcome back to the channel. I, of course, am Raven Wolfgar, and I'm kind of set up, but I'm kind of not. I haven't really done anything yet. We still have Odin and Frigg with us. Um, I'm going to start by kind of like getting everything set up here. And while I do, I promised some of you a funny story about the first time I did tarot, which was about 22, 23 years ago. About 22 or 23 years ago, I was in New Orleans. It was, uh, once that was my first time ever being there. And we happened across a shop called Esoterica. Didn't have a lot of money, but wanted everything I saw in there. Uh, the place was pretty cool. Loved it. They had uh, Dead Can Dance playing over the uh, over the store's uh, sound system, so that was pretty cool. Got to listen to them for the first time that way. And I was just kind of interested in maybe learning tarot. There were there were quite a few decks uh, from which to choose. Of course, there was this one, the old Rider Waite uh, tarot, which I looked at and was like, eh, too plain. Wanted something a little more, uh, a little more eye-catching, so that when you know, if I ever did read for someone, they would be like, oh yeah, you should see his deck. That's pretty cool. So I want something with a little cool factor. And I kind of went through them and finally found one and purchased it along with another book. I think it was like a couple, purchased a couple books actually. And I remember we, we went into the French Quarter, went to Esoterica. I don't know if we meant to go back to where we were before, but we ended up back there, uh, my girlfriend and I. And we hung around for a little while. No, actually, this is my second time going into New Orleans. So, second time going into New Orleans, this is pretty much what happened. And I've got this tarot deck, got this book, and I'm being given some pretty good advice. When you're a young man getting really good advice, uh, you tend to just try not to listen to it. <laughs> Actually, I was, I was trying to take as much of it to heart as I could, but, um, yeah, it was, that was a long time ago. Anyway, so I actually started trying to learn this thing, and it was the roughest time I had ever had trying to learn a tarot deck, ever. To give you an idea of which one it was, actually, I'll tell you, it was the Golden Dawn Hermetic Tarot Deck. You, I'm going to say this, if, if you're a first-timer getting into tarot, I do not recommend that book ever at all for any reason. It is, in my opinion, not a good deck to start with. The images are pretty much sensory overload. You are going to have a really rough time handling it. In more way, in more often than not, it's going to handle you. So anyway, uh, word started getting around that I had a deck of tarot cards. Immediately, people were assuming I could read them. I was, I had a sort of a passing familiarity with the deck. I didn't have a full understanding of it, and I decided to try a few readings out on a couple of people I knew. And of course, they read fine at first. Then they started giving me a few details I didn't want. So it, it created some awkward uh, moments. The first few people would set up a, a date and time to come over so I could do this, and they wouldn't keep their appointments. Not that they were paying me, I didn't care. So the next few... Uh, start kind of trying to make some time with me and a couple of them came 
here's the thing. A lot of the people who came to me for readings were daughters of Baptist and Pentecostal preachers. And they all they always wanted to come incognito, but they had to come with their friends. Like, why? A couple a couple well, more often than not, I'd start doing the readings. We'd start talking about things. And there were times I was like, no, I don't want to tell them that. And this deck gets pretty insistent. Or whoever the guides were gets really insistent. So I would have to look up and tell their friends, all of you need to get the fuck out now. This is a private matter. They'd get out, I'd make sure they were away. I'd go over it with this person, and the next thing you know, I was giving, uh, like I said, a lot of very personal information, information I did not want to give them, information I didn't want. So, quite honestly, I was just like, I hope I never have to do another one of these again. Every single time. And... It all, this always happened. Dad would find out. Dad would fly off the handle. And I know for a fact, you know, his darling little angel threw me under the bus because then I'd hear this pounding at my door followed by this screaming maniac, you know, going off about how dare I expose his daughter to this kind of thing. And I didn't want to have to open that door because if I did, I would be like, look, dad or reverend or brother so-and-so, your daughter's a deviant and I had nothing to do with that. So I... In closing, I would just like to let you know, if you're thinking about reading tarot, really kind of get to know the decks. Certain decks I have been drawn to lately, and we've gotten along pretty, pretty great. Others, we're kind of getting to know each other still. And I've got three of them. I'm, I've cleansed them, but now I've got to get to know them. So... We're not using those just yet, but what we are using today, of course, is traditional right away. Uh, since there was a story about a traditional sm small southern town, we're using uh, the Starseed Oracle and the Viking Oracle. And I'm giving this, this Canon camera a whirl here because, quite honestly, the Handycam wasn't cutting it. So, one black stone to banish, to banish evil from this space. One black stone to get the negativity up out of our face. One black stone to welcome friends from near and far. And one more black stone to say I love you, whoever you are. So, let's get right down to it. Let's start this thing a burning. Also, it's dark in here because it's kind of early as balls. I've got work in a few hours. And when I say a few hours, I mean more like probably about six. I just, I have this weird habit of waking up early these days. So, with that being said, I've also, uh, I grabbed the wrong tea. I'm drinking green tea. That's what's in there. And uh, I went full boil for this one. So, I've probably already made it bitter. So, it doesn't matter, I don't think. So anyway, so uh, we're going to do just another general reading. Uh, let's do my... I still want to go mind, body, and spirit, if that's okay. But first, let's see, with Odin and Frig watching, who is guiding us today? That's going to be interesting. By the way, I hope you like the, the show's new opening and closing. That was something I really kind of had to put together on the fly. I had some B-roll that I shot myself. Again, with that handy cam, you saw how well that came out. That, uh, that bridge is probably one of the most calm-inducing spots I know. And 
Wow, okay, yo. Looks like we got, looks like we got three of them. Okay, so who do we have? Well, we do have Frithgard. That's the land of peace. We also have Freya and Hell herself. Okay, so let's get to know our guides, shall we? I really want to see. Alright, so let's start with Freya. Birth and death are both part of life. Feminine power is different from but equal to masculine power. You can fight your own battles. Choose partners with discernment. Fertility in all forms surrounds you now. Healing in body, mind, and spirit is currently available to you. External beauty is rarely enough. Seek depth and intelligence too. Well, I can't argue with that. Can't, and look at this, the, the card numbers. Freya, 27. Frithgard, 28. Hell, 29. And with Frithgard, it's time to find refuge. We all need occasional respite. From the chaos and pressure of the world around us, there is profound sanctity in places that protect us. Silence is valuable now. Secure both the protection of your community and your own peace. Seek the action that will weave peace into current situation. There we go. And finally, hell. Things are not always as they seem. Death is only the beginning. Keep moving through difficult circumstances. Don't get stuck. You may need rest at the end of a long project or a difficult one. And you may receive an inheritance of some kind. All of that speaking toward doing our best work and, of course, resting and recuperating at the end. Death and birth being a part of life. Okay, I think that speaks for itself personally. Uh, unless you need a little more of an explanation. I don't think you do. I think you're smarter. I think you can figure that out. I think you can dwell on it a little while. So, let's see. So, today... What does our body need? What what can our three guides, what can Freya, Hell, and Frithgard reveal about our bodies today? So we've got the lovers. Obviously that is, um, that's always a good card to come up, but a lot of people think that's about relationships and typically it's not. Um, it can symbolize many, many other things, and more often than not, it's, it, it usually means something other than finding love. However, in some cases, that's exactly what it is. But we do have a duality here, which our, which our reading has already started out with with our guides. A duality between life and death, work and rest, and uh, sort of an sort of an equilibrium and a balance between the two and that's what our bodies need a lot of the time is balance hey guess what sometimes you need a little self-love don't you so let's let's see what else our body needs and we've got the two of wands i i know this card a little bit if you look at it there's one wand planted in the ground uh, this guy is always looking outward and he's got the world in it. He's got a globe in his hand or in one hand and in the other he's got his uh, staff there. And what this means is we do have a choice ahead of us. But we are planning and we are looking forward. We're looking forward to something. Um, Obviously, with that lover's card coming into play, I feel like there's there's a balance there, but there's also a choice. There's a lot of duality coming up in this uh, particular reading so far. And not that there's anything wrong with that. Obviously, we're, we're kind of like, some of us are burning our candles at both ends, and uh, oh, some of us are getting messages just kind of thrown to us, are we not? So apparently this this wants us to have four cards today for the body. So we have 
the Ace of Swords, and the Star. Star is a great card, but I really want to get to that Ace of Swords first um, because that's that's what we got to deal with at the moment, and I really don't want us uh, losing sight. But it this does symbolize logic. It symbolizes clarity, and it does symbolize power. Normally, the swords is that's a suit that deals with conflict. Not in this case. This is the beginning stages of something. So, with our with our balance, with our choices that we got to make, with that logic, that clarity, just a clarity of mind. Obviously, a little R and R does us some good. And I know that we're sitting on Tuesday right now. Tuesday is, of course, Tears Day. And that is a, that's a god of justice. One of the things the, the Lady Justice carries, a sword. One hand, a sword, the other, the scales. If we balance ourselves out today, that's where that star card comes into play. The star is a great card because it does mean that things are coming into alignment. Our stars are lining up for us. It's a, it's a card that does signify success. And so we do have uh, some, some hope and some inspiration there. Things are looking great today. today today's a Tuesday. Hey, guess what? The week's well underway, isn't it? So, not too long before the weekend. Well, wow, these things are really wanting to get out there. Oh, we got two of them. Okay. So we've got... We've got... A, a nine of swords, and we have a nine of wands. So, nine of swords. Definitely so This is for our spirit. Or this is for our mind. Something's weighing on our minds, guys. Something's weighing on our minds and it's keeping us up at night. It's giving us all kinds of anxiety. What what could it be? Again, if you if you attack your problem with logic and with some clarity, you should be fine. So what are we worried about? Why is that uh if you look at that uh, nine of wands, he's looking pretty beat up. And that's why I'm a little concerned. That our mental state looks like it might just be kind of undergoing a little bit of a, a little bit of a shake up, but really that particular card it represents a uh, strength and stamina. Remember we talked about stamina yesterday, a staying power, and our capability. Yeah, he's kind of looking like yeah he's beat up, but he's still standing. So obviously some something's being done right. And let's see what happens when we try to, whoa, no, 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 no. Let's not get out of hand, guys. Come on, I know that you're anxious to get your message out, but what's really important for the mind here? An Eight of Pentacles or an Eight of Coins. Now this, this one displays workmanship. Obviously, our mind's most important thing is workmanship. When you're working, your mind is not focused on the problems. Your mind's focused on the task at hand, especially if you're trying to do this well and do it right. I would say don't worry too much. You're, you're going to be okay. I mean, look, look at the body. The body's doing one thing, the mind's doing another. But the mind needs to be occupied at this point. And... I think when we get to the uh, star seed and the runes, you're going to get a lot of clarity on that mind set right now. What does... Okay. Before I can even ask the question, what does the spirit need, it blasts out with about... Holy smokes. Blasts out with a whole bunch of cards. I'm just going to try to... <sighs> okay. Well, I guess you want it. So... Let's see what we got. We've got seven of wands. We've got the hermit. 
All right, so as I was saying before the camera so rudely interrupted me, uh, looks like you're a bit on the defensive there, spiritually speaking, which leads us to this hermit because it, it looks to me like you want to retreat. There's nothing wrong with that. When you find time, you will need to retreat. This is where you're going to find your wisdom. This is where you're going to find uh, some your spirit. Uh, next we have a Four of Swords. That Four of Swords... I'll be honest with you, I, I often wonder about that card when it comes up because sometimes it can symbolize rest. Other times it can symbolize anything but but this in this uh in this context I'm looking at it as exhaustion and if you're exhausted <laughs> you're spiritually exhausted there's your issue because this this set right here is all about the spirit now the queen of pentacles I think we're looking at a little we're looking at a little spiritual wealth here You're looking for something, look for something that's going to nurture your spirit. Uh, something with that motherly edge. Again, we have this mother thing popping up. It looks like Mother's Day is stretching over into, from Sunday into Tuesday and so, uh, Monday, Tuesday and so forth. Um, Temperance is, is a pretty good card when you get it because that's more advice. Again, with balance. You know, you're going to have to compromise somewhere. Balance yourself out. Don't get too heavy into your, you know, into your head. This is where you're going to have, look, right now your body and your mind are out of balance. Spirits, what kind of puts things into balance sometimes? Well, that Three of Swords, I can tell you right now, that one's self-explanatory. That is heartbreak. And no wonder you're spiritually exhausted. Once you're spiritually exhausted, tears are going to start flowing. It's never good news. With the, uh, you know, going back to the Pentacles again. And this is a Six of Pentacles. You can tell this is this is one guy who... He's kind of he's kind of like trying to give equal shares to everyone, but in this case, it, you know, he's trying to be as charitable as possible. And you notice he's using those scales to again balance out what what do you have to give versus you know what someone's asking. It's okay to say no. It really is. It's also okay to say. I can't do that, but here's what I can do. And go with it. And of course, mean it. Stick to it. There's that Ace of Wands, so this is an opportunity. So here's your creativity, your passion, your enthusiasm. This is what it symbolizes, and that's where you're going to find it. In your generosity, with you balancing yourself out, with not giving too much, but not giving too little, you're gonna find that fire and that creative energy again. You're gonna come upon your justice card, which I love when that card comes up because it's so it's it really does speak to us all, really. You will have absolutes and you will have some cause and effect. But again, here's here are those scales. It's similar to the cups right here with uh, temperance. Scales over here with justice. We've got birth and death. We have balance all throughout this. And then the tower, this is your breakthrough moment. This is fate telling you, get off your butt. It has something in store for you. It's going to, again, we had birth. And what else do we have? Death. Those are two things that they have to coexist. So even though you do kind of find that fire and that energy and that passion again, just when things balance out, boom, here comes, here comes a bit of upheaval. Okay, but you're going to be prepared for it. You're going to be fine. So 
right, let's see what the Oracle cards have to say. So, Universe, what do you have to tell us about the mind? I'm really curious to see how this one plays out because, wow, that spread got big. Okay, let's just do this real quick. Karmic relationships. So, your karmic relationships, how does that, how does that pan out for you? Uh, da, 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 da. Karmic relationship. Oh, there we go. Okay. If I could just get my pages to unstick. There we go. Okay. So, we're all innocent children looking to be seen, understood, and cherished. It's much harder to grow closer through conflict than it is to grow further apart. And yet, that's the invitation of conflict. It's easy to react and take things personally. It's more challenging to see the innocence of all involved and find a way to grow closer through the conflict. So, how can you soften your heart and drop your defenses enough to see things from a different point of view? How can you see the innocence of all involved? And can you learn to see the similarities rather than the differences? That's what that karmic relationship is all about. You're going to experience some conflict. You're going to have to figure out how to solve it, but you're going to have to figure out how other people are seeing it. So rather than questioning them, you know, or giving them the third degree there, just ask them, you know, how did you arrive at that conclusion? I'd be interested to know and mean it. So for the next one, we've got Whale and Orca Elders. Share your song, frequency of sound, diving deep. I can tell you right now, that one is about, it is about sharing, of course. Sharing a little wisdom, I think, never hurts. And, here we go. Here we go. So, you are being called to surrender to your deepest truth and share it with potency. To bow to who you truly are. Stretch your heart wide enough to hold it all. Leave your fears, doubts, and baggage at the door. To question any part of you that doesn't feel good enough. Allow the song that echoes in the four chambers of your heart to emanate in all four directions. Peel back the layers of suffering and pain to reveal to others your soul's true song and endeavor to see the souls of all you meet. Just what that karmic relationship was saying there. Finally, what does our spirit need that did not help? We're not doing this again. So what does our spirit need for this? Fall into my arms. Surrender holding the opposites and extremes of life. Well, we know this one all too well, don't we? So, you're being invited to welcome the highs and lows of human experience, to let them initiate you more fully into life, the agony and the ecstasy, the beauty and the bitterness. This life is but a single breath in the inextinguishable existence of your spirit, of your experience as a soul. Great Mother wants you to hand over your loneliness, worries, hurt, sorrows, fears, burdens, and doubts, to lay them on her altar, to fully fall into her arms, to remember that while these extremes are difficult, they can also be magnificent. The more wildly the pendulum of your life swings, the more truthfully you can say, I have lived. I actually did a reading for a friend of mine. This card did come up, and guess what? Lay your burdens down. They do not belong to you. So, now we've got three runes to draw, and I'm just going to draw those out really quick. We're going to get those banged out, and I'm going to get out of here and get on with my morning. And that way, you can get on with watching this video. Hopefully upload it on time this time. So, we have... Oh, wow. Finally, some really good news. I can tell you what these are. 
somebody who is always going to be cattle or wealth. This is a card that signifies wealth. Back then, the more cattle you had, the more wealthy you were. This is El Hazar Agiz. That is the elk horn. That is a symbol of protection. So as far as the mind goes, don't worry. You are protected. And finally, Raiho. This is the one I used to know. <laughs> well, let's see, uh, Raiho. I am uh, pretty sure I should have remembered that one. Okay. Your joys are signposts to your purpose and destiny. The journey is as important as the destination. Focus on the now rather than the burdens of the past or the unrealized future. Stretch. Aim for new horizons. Work with the rhythms of life and not against them. Let's tie it all in. Okay, so for our body this this week or uh, this on this particular day, we really need to start seeking some balance. That's mind, body, and spirit. Don't give too much of yourself. Try to understand where the others are coming from while stating your case as well. See if you can reach a compromise. Try not to get too into your head. Try to get, get yourself a little meditation time, a little me time, a little quiet time. Listen to that inner voice. You will be okay. Okay? Always. Take a deep breath in through the nose for four seconds. Hold it for four. Out through the mouth for four. Keep doing that. If you can get your hands on a little bit of opal, you know, do that. If you've got a piece of amethyst or a piece of quartz, hold on to that. Try to really get, in, get yourself in tune. Look on YouTube for different meditation videos. There are plenty of them out there. And, of course, I hope this reading resonated with you. And until the next one, till tomorrow, I love you guys. I will see you later. Shine on.